So now if you have the 3D model on the canvas, we can construct our rendering. So how to create a rendering in Viscom? The first thing what we have to do is give a small description or prompt to our rendering. This is just a basic description of the product that we are creating. Let's say headphone now. Simply typing headphone. Under the mode, we can select the render mode because that's suitable to render out your sketches or your 3D models. The refine mode is good for iterating on already existing renderings. Under the style, we can stick with the Viscom general style. And I'm going to leave the drawing influence at 100% and click generate with one image. The drawing influence is going to determine how much of what we have on the canvas is going to influence the end result. With 100% I'm telling it to stick with my lines, exactly. So as you can see it's constructed a very basic headphone rendering on top of my lines exactly. Uh, when you receive a rendering like this, this is just a preview, you can notice that you can't export the canvas at this time because first you have to confirm a result. But you also can show the original canvas to see what it created the rendering of. You can also click on regenerate with the same specification that I'm going to do now. We also can cancel this rendering process or confirm it. I'm going to click on confirm. And when I did that, you can notice that the interface came back and we can export this rendering if you want to. But let's go into the layers tab. And you can see it added this on top of the layers. So every confirmed rendering will make into the layers tab. Viscom is always going to construct the rendering on top of what you have on a canvas. So if you want to have more generations out of this headphone that you have to, then you have to hide this layer and make the original input visible like that. And we can generate again. But let's start specifying the prompt a little bit so we can construct the prompt in a way where we have our main subject in the middle and we can add some prepositional modifiers at the front and some basic like setting options at the back. So let's try something like it. For example, we can specify the color, material or feeling of the headphone, what we want to have. Let's say something uh, like red leather headphone. Let's say red leather headphone. And we can say studio background. So just naturally telling AI what I want to receive. I want to have a red leather headphone in a studio background. And it's also important to mention to separate each section of the prompt that you are aiming to be a different thing. For example, here I want the headphone to be red leather, but I separated it with a comma because the studio background is like a different thing that is not directly connected to the headphone. I'm telling AI to treat it as a different instance rather than one thing. Okay, now we got our preview of a red leather headphone and the background is a very neutral white studio. I can cancel this result if I don't like it and I can start specifying the prompt even more. But I'm going to say dark studio background and hit generate again with Viscom General and 100% drawing influence. Also important to mention about the prompts that the first word will be the most influential and the last word will be the less influential. So keep in mind this order of importance when you're writing your prompt. You can see that I wrote red at the beginning of my prompt and it was very much influential because the background ended up being red as well. But the dark studio background is still like remains. Okay, so I can confirm this rendering, but also hide it to expose my original input like that. So let's construct a more detailed and longer prompt this time. So I'm going to hit generate with this prompt of premium headphone design concept by Bang & Olufsen, aluminum and light brown leather, depth of field, studio background, so this is a good example how it's worth to construct your prompt. So the prepositional parameters can be at the front as it's a premium headphone design concept by Bang & Olufsen. Naming a brand can steer the design direction a little bit. 
and it's going to apply the brand DNA and identity on your package. I specified the materials after that, aluminum and light brown. I also said depth of field. I wanted to have a sense of space, maybe a blurred background. And then the whole thing should be in a dark studio. And I separated each instance with, with the help of a comma to make AI understand that those are separate parameters. Okay, now let's start playing with the drawing influence. So the drawing influence essentially determines how much of your canvas is going to influence the end result. But let's start lowering it. I'm going to disable or hide this layer. And on this original 3D model, I'm just going to generate renderings with lower drawing influence. Um, let's say, let's go to 70% this time. And I'm going to create one rendering out of it. So by lowering the drawing influence, I'm telling AI that I want re less resemblance of what I have on my canvas in the final rendering. And I want a little bit more for the prompt to take over. And you can check the rendering like that. Even at 70%, it precisely followed the underlying sketch. Let's see what it does at 50%. I'm hiding the layer. As you can see, it's still pretty much stick to my original lines, but it has had some freedom to play with. But that's that's an interesting part when you when you will go under 50%. Let's try with 20%. So by systematically lowering the drawing influence, you're telling AI that you that you want to rely more on the prompt and less on the image that you have on a canvas. And if you go as low as 20%, you can see that it starts to let the original canvas state go and just create something freely on top of your description. But let's go to 0%. So with 0% drawing influence, I'm generating what we call text to image. So only my prompt is going to matter in the end result. It's not going to consider the canvas at all. And as you can see, it completely dropped what I have on my canvas but I can create very nice inspiration material with this, uh, with this 0% drawing influence. Let's create four this time and let's see, let's see what it can construct when it doesn't have a guidance at all. Yes, I get some very random compositions inspired by my prompt basically. So these can be like nice inspiration images perhaps. Yeah, so this is why I usually use the upper part of the drawing influence scale, for example, around 50% or even more, because I want my original sketches and canvas to properly influence the end results. So if you generated a lot of different renderings, the history is a very handy function that you can see on the right bottom corner, right above this question mark. And here you can see all the previously generated renderings and you can restore them from here. For example, if you forgot to confirm or you haven't confirmed one of the renderings that you liked, then you can pretty much do it from here. Just click on this add to canvas and it becomes a layer or you can just export it right away. Or if you generated four instances, you can add to canvas all or export all of the four as well. So it's just a very, very helpful addition to your entire process and, and you, can, you can have a nice feeling and control over the entire process that you've done. So feel free to go crazy with the materials and the settings with your prompt because it's just a fun way to come up with new creative ideas uh, that can spark your imagination.